Okay, in this video, we are going to be talking about CSS flex boxes. And flex box allows us to lay out our website with different elements. It just makes it easier for aligning our elements. Uh, flex box stands for the flexible box model, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and just jump into it and kind of show you how you can easily lay out elements on your page using Flexbox. So I think the first thing that I want to do is I'm just gonna create a new file and I'm just going to call this flex.html because what we're gonna do in this example, first I'm gonna kind of just show you moving a box around the screen and then we're actually going to apply that to a few elements on our website. So let me create a default HTML file and I will just give this a title of flex box rocks. Okay, so let's go ahead and add, let's say a box right here. And for the sake of this video, I'm just going to add some internal styles right here just by creating a style tag in our head. And I'm going to say box, I want to give it a background and we'll just stick with red. And we'll say that we want the width to be 100 pixels and the height to be 100 pixels. So we have our box right there. And I'm also going to put this box inside of a container. And I'm going to give this a class of flex-container. And typically, whenever you are using Flexbox, you usually have a container, and then you'll have the elements inside of the container. So we have that here. Let me save that, and let's go to our flex.html. And you'll see that we have the box on the screen. So I think what I'm going to do is just open up Developer Tools, and then I'll kind of show you how we can use Flexbox. So we have our Flex container here. And with our body and our flex container, I actually want to set the height to 100% and the width to 100%. And I'll do that the same with the flex container. So I'll say height of 100% and width of 100%. And it actually doesn't look like that did much. So let me go ahead and try that without the width and height. So let's just say the flex container, I'm going to show you a new value for the display property. And the display property that we want to use is flex. So then with Flexbox, we also have a bunch of different properties that we can use, one of which is justify content. And we can say where we want the content to be justified. So let's go ahead and just say center for now. And then we can also say align items. And I'm going to make that center as well. And yeah, it looks like that the reason why we're not seeing that centered is because we need actually the container to be 100% of the window. So I think what I could do actually is I could say height 100. And this is a new value that you're going to learn here. I'm going to say VH, which stands for view height. So you can see that we have our box that is centered. So the justify content and align items, those are going to be two that you're going to be using all the time. So align items, we could say that we want it to be the start or we want it to be center or we can make that end. So the same with the justify content, we could say that we want that to start. We could then say center, or we could say flex end. So with the container, we can actually tell it how we want the items to be aligned, but we can also align the specific element. So we can use a property which is called align self, and maybe we can say that we want to align to the start. So we actually want to start it instead of having it at the end. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new box. So I'm going to create a box two. And how about I add the flex container up here and I give it a height of 100 view height. So let me reload and we should have two boxes right there. And that's because we don't have any styles for box two. So how about I just apply those same styles for box two and I reload, now we have the boxes on top of each other. So I showed you before that we could float an item to the left, so I could say, actually let me add that right here, I could say float left, and you can see that those items are floating left. We could then say margin left 10 pixels, just so you can see it a little bit more. So that is a way that you can align items with floats, but you'll see as you're using CSS, floating items left and right, and then clearing, it can just, become a hassle and it's not that friendly to work with, which is why using Flexbox allows you to align items with ease. So let me go ahead and remove this float and this margin. 
And now if we wanted to make the items right next to each other, we could simply just say for our flex container, we want to display flex and then they align right next to each other. How about for our box two? Yeah, we'll keep that margin left of 10 pixels. So the cool thing about Flexbox is we can say that we want to display this as flex and we can also specify the direction. So by default, the direction is a row. So they'll be right next to each other. We could then say flex direction and maybe we want this to be a column instead. And how about I actually add a margin top as well? Just so that way you can see that. So we have the flex container with a flex direction of column. We could also specify how we want to justify the content as you just seen. So we can say that we want to justify that at the start. We could then say center and you can see that it's centered here vertically because we have flex direction column. If we then specified row, you can see now that the content is justified to the center there. We could then also say that we want to justify the content between. So maybe we want to have space in between each of them. So we want one to the left and one to the right. We can say justify content space between. And you can see that if we actually wanted to have space evenly around it, we could then say space around. So you can see that moving elements around the screen using Flexbox is super easy. And I wanna show you this cool website. It's called Flexbox Froggy and it allows you to actually play this kind of game as you learn Flexbox. So it says, for example, justify content flex end. So you say justify content flex end. You basically have to get the frog onto the lily pad. So then you could say next and you can go through all these different examples of Flexbox Froggy and kind of get to know Flexbox quite a bit more. I would also recommend checking out uh, if you go to w3schools.com, and I think we can just search here, or you can even look for Flexbox. Yeah, I think you can do a search for Flexbox here. And you can learn all about Flexbox and all the different properties. But the main ones that we just covered that I think that you should really get familiar with is obviously to get this to display flex, you'll say display flex. We also then talked about justify content, which allows you to specify at the start, the center or space between. We also had align items and this will allow you to align the items. If you're viewing it vertically or horizontally, it'll allow you to align it either on the X axis or the Y axis. And then we also had align self, which allows you to specify how you want to align the specific item inside of the container and not listen to what the parent container is telling you. So you can go against the grain and say, no, I want this specific one to start, or I want this specific one to center. We then also talked about flex direction. And this is if you want the direction to be a row or a column. And then one more that I did want to cover is just flex itself. So you can specify if you want this to be flex one, flex two, and this will just change the width of the specific box. So let me jump back over here and show you an example of this. So let's say for a box one and box two, we just had flex of one. And you can see that they are equally spaced. Let's say as an example, we wanted box two to maybe have twice the width. So instead of flex one, we'll actually say flex two. And you can see that now that that has twice the width of the original one. So using flex, you can specify a positive integer to specify the width of that specific item. Now there are a few more that I'm not gonna cover in this video, which is flex grow, flex shrink, and flex wrap, but you can go ahead and learn that from the W3 Schools site, uh, or you can Google it around and kind of just play around with those three properties and get familiar with them. But let's go ahead and add some Flexbox to our current website. So let's go back to our index. And I think I'm just going to delete this flex.html because I just wanted to give you an example of using Flexbox. So I'll delete that. And here we have our blog and you can see that we have these titles right here. And I know that we specified that using floats. So if we go back to, we have col, col. If we go back to our style.css and we have these col with a width of 33.3%. 
So instead of doing that, we're actually going to utilize Flexbox. So how about I go to my blog and I'm just going to create a class called container. And inside of this container, maybe I'll just call this post, post and post. And the great thing about Flexbox is we can get rid of all these clear fix. It kind of seems like a, a way to hack at your layouts, uh, but that's just the way that you did things back in the day is you use those floats and those clear fix. So that's kind of nice. We can just remove that. And now we'll specify that we want our container to be display flex. Let me go ahead and save that. Let's go back here and reload. And you can see that we just cleaned up that much CSS and all we had to do was specify our container and we wanted the items inside of that to be display flex. So the cool thing too is now we can say for each post, maybe we want to have a padding of 10 pixels and we don't have to worry about the width and then breaking into a new line. So we just used Flexbox to clean up some styles inside of our style.css and apply that to our blog. So next, the cool thing that we could do is maybe we wanted this flex direction to be a column instead of the row. So if we were to save that and reload, you can see that that's now displayed as a column. And typically you would want to move the column and the rows based on the width of the user's browser. Say if they're viewing it on their phone, you probably want to display this direction as column. But if they're on their desktop, maybe you want that to be a row. So that's kind of a perfect segue for the next video. We're going to talk about media queries and how you can change the styles based on the browser or the device that the user is viewing your website on. So that's it. That's just a quick 101 on Flexbox. Make sure to get familiar with it because it makes laying out your websites and your applications so much easier and it actually makes it fun. So uh, until next time, I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next video.